Along the St. Croix River sits the small town of Osceola, Wisconsin. Our story begins, as stories sometimes do around here, in a local bar called Tippy Canoes. Walking into the Tippy at 3 o'clock on a Sunday afternoon last February, these two men. The one on the left is Ryan Haas, whose evening will take a very dangerous detour. Haas is the police chief just a few miles up the highway in the village of Dresser, a town that prides itself on its old time friendliness. Hi, is police chief around, Ryan Haas? Of course, that may depend on why you're here. Do you think it's appropriate I'm, for you I'm, to have I'm, that much I'm, to I'm drink? Back to work. All right. I mean, Open I wonder day. what the citizens think about this. Have a good day. You really think it's appropriate for a law enforcement officer to do that? Nothing to say? While the chief gets back to work, we'll get back to the bar, where Haas and his friend are ordering their first beer. Fifteen minutes later, another spotted cow and Surly. And 20 minutes after that, a third round. But Chief Haas, who is off duty, is just getting warmed up. At 4.13, the men switched to cocktails, and not just any cocktail, a Long Island iced tea. In this surveillance video, you can see the bartender pour five different kinds of booze. The bar tells us the ingredients include vodka, gin, tequila, brandy, and triple sec. 24 minutes later, a second round of Long Islands. 26 minutes after that, Haas's friend switches back to beer. But Haas orders a third Long Island iced tea. Again, we see the bartender pour the booze. A new bartender comes on duty as Haas gets his fourth Long Island iced tea. By the time they settle their tab and start walking out, Chief Haas has consumed three beers and four Long Island iced teas over the course of three hours. Ryan Haas left Tippy Canoes around 6 o'clock, and boy, he did not get far. Just a few hundred feet, really, and he drove his car right off the road. In fact, he was so far down here, you couldn't even see his car from the road, and then he simply walked away. Haas ended up back here at his home in Osceola, less than a mile away from where he ditched his car. How he got here, we really don't know for sure. He could have walked. It would have taken him about 15 minutes. This is also where Osceola police would show up a few hours later. Haas called the tow truck and said he would leave his keys in the car. The tow truck driver, suspicious about the circumstances, called police. According to the police report, Haas claimed a deer jumped out in front of him and he swerved and went into the ditch. But the officer noticed Haas had very bloodshot and glossy eyes. His speech was very slurred. Haas struggled to put on his shoes and almost lost his balance several times. Haas admitted to the officer he'd started drinking around noon that Sunday at another bar in Osceola, P.Y.'s, before Tippy Canoes. Haas said he had only four drinks, but added, and this is important, that he continued drinking when he got home. Nowhere in the police report does it say that Haas is a fellow police officer. But when the officer asked Haas what he was drinking, Haas said, Hey, stop there. I know why you are asking these questions, and I'm not saying any more. When the officer asked Haas to perform a field sobriety test, he refused, saying, What is the point? I will not perform the test. Now what are you going to do? The answer? Apparently not much. Why couldn't you arrest Chief Haas? Well, before any arrests are made, you have to have probable cause. Unfortunately, in this circumstance, probable cause was difficult for several reasons. Osceola exactly Police Chief Ron first, Pedras was monitoring the situation that night and told us without a field sobriety test, they just didn't have the probable cause to arrest Haas. You know, we can't ask someone to come out of their house or force them to come out of their house to take field sobriety tests. We can't force anybody to take field sobriety tests. Haas wasn't arrested and never brought to the police station to take a blood, breath, or urine test that would have determined his blood alcohol level. And under Wisconsin's Operating While Intoxicated Law, or OWI, that test must be given within three hours of Haas driving. It's two hours in Minnesota. By the time Osceola police showed up at Chief Haas's door, it was 8.45, nearly three hours after Haas left the bar. And Haas could simply claim it was the drinks at home that pushed him over the legal limit. Have you seen people do that before, leave scenes of accidents and say, well, I, I've had some drinks at home? Yes. 
it's a tactic. It's something that's, that's common. I don't recall ever having um, a video of my client drinking seven drinks. That would be a problem for you as a defense attorney, I imagine. That would be a come to Jesus moment. Bob Speeder is a defense attorney who specializes in drunk driving cases. It's hardly the first time he's heard of someone leaving the scene of an accident or getting into trouble with Long Island iced teas. These can run from three to five drinks in a Long Island iced tea. Or if it's poured straight like it's supposed to be, it'd be two. You had four Long Island iced teas and you had three beers. By our estimation, that would clearly put you above the, the standard for legal consumption. I have no comment on this. It'd be fair to say that there's a general consensus under any prosecutor or defense attorney that four Long Island iced teas would put somebody over the legal limit. Even without a blood test, Speeder believes prosecutors could have charged Haas with drunk driving based on the video alone. Police learned about the Tippy Canoes video that night, but the second bartender told them Haas had only two drinks, which may have been all she saw. A copy of the video was given to police a couple days later, but Osceola police admit they never counted up the drinks from the bar like we did. Instead, four days later, an officer issued two tickets to Haas, failure to report an accident and failure to maintain control of vehicle. Haas wasted no time paying the $449 fine. Although we don't have a chemical test and don't know that Mr. Haas was legally intoxicated, it's still an incredibly frustrating situation not to be able to deal with and find out one way or another. Well, and especially not to get cooperation from a fellow law enforcement officer. That was frustrating. I'm surprised he can walk at all. It's more than frustrating to John Cummings of Minnesotans for safer driving. It's downright shameful. To use his knowledge of the law to avoid the consequences is, is terrible. And how do we ever change this if there aren't consequences? And when they're doing that, who are they serving? Who are they protecting? Well, they're they're, getting, they're he's, he's serving him and protecting him. This video is uh, damning. And if the law can't do anything, well, then the public should know about this. Back in Dresser, we called up the members of the village board. And Tom Lydon here from Fox 9. Not a single Dresser. board member called us back. About, uh, As for Chief Oz, he is still protecting and serving the people of the village of Dresser with his own version of old time friendliness. You went back and you ditched your car. I mean, that the behavior sounds like someone who was, knew they were drunk, went home and continued drinking. I have no comment on this. Thank you. Do you think it's a we asked the Osceola police chief about whether the video alone could have been used to charge Haas with OWI. As the defense attorney suggested, he says the district attorney tells him a charge based on just the video and the officer's observations alone would never stick. It is worth noting Wisconsin is the only state in the nation where your first drunk driving charge is not a criminal offense. It's considered a traffic offense. It's unclear how a charge or even an OWI conviction would have affected Haas's job mm. status. Tom, do we have any idea what his blood alcohol level might have been? I think that's an excellent question. You know, we obviously don't. There are a lot of variables here. We looked into it. His weight, whether he's a social or a heavy drinker, what kind of shots were poured, all those are variables. But according to some blood alcohol calculators, he could have been as much as three times over the legal limit mm -hmm. for driving. We saw snow on the ground. It was February. Uh, mm -hmm. What was the weather like that night? Yeah, Ian tells me the conditions were just fine.